Buenos nachos and welcome back to the channel. On today's episode, we're gonna be recapping this Xbox power supply. The Xbox power supply that we're gonna be working on today is the Samsung Tuscany. It is model number PSCD101301A, revision K. And of course, this is the North American version power supply, which means it is the 100 to 127 volts, which also works in high pan. And we do have a capacitor or two that are leaking and that have failed. So that's why we're gonna be replacing them. We're gonna be using a cap kit from console five. So without further ado, let's begin. First thing you wanna do is discharge the capacitors. So I have this discharging tool right here and you'll wanna just do that on the larger caps. And what would happen is this red light would be on if there was a charge. And I'll just do it on a couple of caps to make sure that we're all good. Now that we know we're safe, let's go ahead and begin. Let's get our vacuum going. Bust open this bag here. So we're gonna work on these two giant ones first. And you'll notice that it has this right here. You're just gonna wanna cut that down the middle. And now we'll go ahead and desolder these. It's probably best to add some leaded solder to make this a little bit easier for the removal, though I don't really think that uh, the solder on here is all too bad, and it pulls out just like that. And of course, you'll wanna pay attention to your polarity. Let's go ahead and pull out the next one. Won't be the easiest to show on camera, but I'll try my best. All right, and those are the 330 UF, 200 voltage. These holes look like they'll be somewhat clear enough, but I think we'll go ahead and clear them up anyway. And for this particular job, you really can use just about any soldering iron tip. It doesn't matter. You shouldn't need a lot of heat to go ahead and pull these caps out. So we'll go ahead and replace these two large caps. And once again, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you pay attention to polarity on this thing. Things will explode if you get it wrong. We'll just go ahead and fold those for now. And we have a couple of smaller capacitors right in here that need to be removed. We'll go ahead and, uh, well, you know, it probably would be easier if I don't have the giant cap right here. So we'll set that aside while we go ahead and replace these 22 UF 50 volts. And we do get two of those. So we'll do the 51 UF first. And it's not gonna be the easiest to show on camera here. Okay, that's one leg, and that's the other. All right, that one just pulled through. I can envision my gloves not lasting very long here. Uh, so that is the one UF 50 volt that needs to be replaced, which it looks like we have a few of these. And once again, of course, you'll want to pay attention to polarity. And it goes in just like that. And then we have another one right beside it that needs to be desoldered. That one just pulled out, no problem. And this one is a 22 UF 50 volt, and that goes right in there. Fold over the legs. Now we can put our big cap back in. Fold the legs. I think at this point we'll go ahead and solder everything up on this side. Go ahead and cut these legs off. And let's touch up anything that we think may be questionable after having done our cutting. Everything looks pretty good. 
All right, next on the list is this tiny capacitor right over here, which is a 50 volt 10 UF. And if I'm not mistaken, we only have one of these to replace. And just like that. And that goes right there, C8. Just fold those leads, and then we'll go ahead and solder it. And now let's go ahead and cut the leads. Now we just have this quadrant over here, which there are a couple of tough capacitors to replace. Namely, namely this one right here. So let's go ahead and remove that. All right, and that one pulled right through. And that happens to be a one UF, 50 volt. We're gonna have to desolder a little bit, that way we can get this capacitor through. That's not a bad fit for C13. C9 is next. We'll go ahead and bend, bend these legs. All right, came out just like that. We'll of course clean up the holes. And this one is a 2210 volt. And that would be C9 as mentioned previously. And it just goes right through like that. And it looks like we have four more capacitors and then we are done. So let's go with this giant one right here, which looks like it's C10. And that's going to be a 3310 volt, which our replacement is a little bit larger. Not the easiest to show on camera. And that should pull through. Sure did. 3310 volt. We'll go ahead and desolder this area. And right through there, C10. And our next one is right here, which looks like it's C11. Almost need like a capacitor extractor. Is it this one? Yep, it's this one right here. Fell right out. We'll go ahead and do a little bit of desoldering. And that one is a 470, 25 volt. Let's fold over the legs. And now we have two more smaller capacitors right here, which it looks like it happens to be at the very corner right here. Let's see if I get the correct solder point first. Yep, sure did. And there we go. Clean up these pads. And that ended up being a 1UF 50 volt. All right, and it went right through just like that. So we'll fold over the legs real quick to make it easier for us to attach. Now we have one more capacitor to remove, which is a 0 0.47 50 volt. And that is also on the corner right over here. And it fell right through. Let's go ahead and clean up the holes with some desoldering braid here. And that was a four set, 0 0.47 50 volt. And our replacement, of course, is 0 0.47 50 volt like that and you'll of course want to bend the legs get it securely in there and then now we can go ahead and finish up our soldering so let's go ahead and start up here And that looked like that was our last joint. Let's go ahead and cut these leads off. And let's touch up anything we think may be questionable. 
And of course, no power supply repair would be complete without the obligatory power connector being soldered. So we don't want things to spark up on us. So let's go ahead and reinforce this area. You should always perform this little maintenance on your power supply just in case. Even if it looks okay, it may develop cracked solder joints in the future. There's one more thing we need to do, and that's put the glue that's in between these two capacitors. My understanding is that's for the coil wind, but also for vibration. That way these cap solder joints don't get all loose and, and cause problems in the future. So we'll be using this stuff right here. So I think I'll use a Q-tip maybe, or some kind of a uh, spatula device. Yes, a spatula device will work. And you're just going to want to put a little bit of that in the center right here. It'll of course take a couple of hours for this to dry, and that should do. And that completes the refurbishment or maintenance of the Xbox power supply. If you found this video helpful or useful, please remember to leave us a like and subscribe. And thanks for watching. Until next time.